once you finish with your alignment, whether you've stopped at the reduced window technique or moved on and cleaned it up with the alignment rectangle, you're going to be ready to take your final image, but there are a few things we want to do before we actually capture it. So the first thing we want to do is make sure everything is framed the way that we want. I'll look here at my horizontal field width. Uh, right now it's at 1.25 microns, which is the same uh, field width that we used for our, our alignment, and that's going to be good for me in terms of seeing all the layers that I'm interested in. Uh, we want to also select the number of pixels that we want for our image. In this case, something like 1024 will probably be all right. If you're trying to do a trying to publish the image, journals often want higher pixel density, so they have a higher dots per inch value. Uh, in this case, if we go to 2048, though, when we're down around one one micron HFW, that's going to mean the, each beam step is is sub nanometer in in position. So you're actually going to start pushing up against the resolution of where the beam can actually be placed by the microscope's boards. So in this case, I probably would stick at 1024 at this high of a mag. Uh, now lastly, what we can do is use our beam shift to uh, position us the way we want, but we always want to perfect or at least adjust the brightness and contrast. It might be a little bit different for what's useful for an alignment versus what's useful for the final picture. So I'm going to pick my dwell time that I want for this image, and I'm going to choose 60 microseconds in this case. And then to check the brightness and contrast, I'm going to turn on the video scope. And this is showing me the gray levels as a function of the beam position along the x-axis. And as it scans over my image, we'll see as it goes into this, this lighter colored layer, my video scope increases. So um, this is not really an ideal way to adjust the video scope when the beam is scanning parallel to all of my layers. So instead, what I'm going to do is turn off the video scope go back to a shorter dwell time and I'm gonna scan rotate the image so this just rotates the beam I can grab this and go around uh, 90 degrees you can also click the 90 to get exactly at 90 and you turn off that window and now when I scan at my 60 microsecond dwell time and turn on the video scope I have essentially a static video scope where I can see all the different gray levels of my layers at the same time. So I want to maximize uh, the amplitude of this so that my brightest pixels are somewhere near the top and my darkest pixels are somewhere near the bottom. So to do that, I'll increase the contrast that increases the amplitude of my graph and I'll lower the brightness to lower the, in the entire graph. Uh, maybe repeat this a little bit. So now I have some dark pixels near the bottom but not perfectly saturated dark and some white pixels near the top but not saturated white. So that gives me a nice video scope. So I can turn that off. I'll go back to a short dwell time. I'll go back to zero degree scan rotation and then turn that off. And now we've been scanning here for a while. We did our alignment here. We adjusted brightness and contrast. So we've probably put a little bit of beam damage onto it. There's going to be some gray boxes. So we want to move away from this. So I'm going to, rather than double clicking, which would move the stage and might disrupt the focal plane as it's contacting the surface, I'm going to use beam shift to just shift us horizontal away from that area. And so now I'm on a nice fresh spot and I'll go to my 60 microseconds and then remember to press pause. Uh, this will make it pause when it gets to the end of the image and we'll save it that way. So as we're scanning here, one thing we can see is there's some texture here. And that's this is the electron beam deposited uh, platinum layer. And there are nano-sized grains in it. So if we can see that nano texture, then we know that we've done a, a good job with the alignment. So look for that after you've finished your alignment. Uh, sometimes if your layers are perfectly flat, you have perfectly flat interfaces, you don't have uh, pores or any rough edges to use for your alignment, you can actually just put the reduced window around the electron beam deposited platinum and uh, you can do the alignment rectangle technique on that and that's a good way to get to essentially a perfect alignment. Now one thing we notice here, there are a couple of artifacts we want to be aware of. So at the top of the image we can tell that we have really excellent focus and astigmatism based on that nano texture. If we look down here at one of these bottom layers, we can tell that it's a little bit out of focus. 
and also probably a little bit of astigmatism based on the way that it's slightly stretched. And the reason for that is when we're in immersion mode, we have a floating lens between the pole piece and our sample surface that minimizes the effective working distance, which gives us a really steep convergence angle on the beam, and that makes us have very small depth of field. So uh, in this case, we're tilted, so the beam is not normal to the surface. So we have a slightly different focal plane to get perfect focus up here versus perfect focus down here. So if if you're looking to make a measurement on a particular layer, then you should do your alignment in line with that layer. In this case, we might be able to move our focus a little bit to the right or the left to try to adjust the focal plane as it contacts the surface. Uh, so that's something that you can do with your own sample. Another thing we want to be aware of is at long dwell time, are we doing anything to stretch uh, or shrink the thickness of our layers? So what can happen is if you have any, any beam drifting while you take the image at long dwell time, uh, you can essentially uh, get the, the image to drift with the, the beam scan, which would elongate the layer, or if it's drifting counter to the beam scan, it would shrink the layer. So here I want to save this image, and then what we could do is uh, to check if we have that artifact, we can go back to a short dwell time and grab the same image, maybe at 0.5 or, or 1 microsecond, and pause that. And now if I recall the image that I just saved, we can compare the 60 microsecond dwell to the 1 microsecond dwell. And on our measurement page, we can select a uh, line measurement. And if I wanted to, I can measure the thickness of this top layer, about 210 nanometers, and compare that to the same spot over here. And so in this case, it actually seems like we don't have much stretching or shrinking of our layers. So we can trust the long dwell time image for our presentation or our publication. Um, but it's a good thing to check that to make sure that you're not unwittingly getting a, an artifact in your final image. When we know we can trust the long dwell time image, that allows us to make smaller measurements with confidence. So this is a particular layer I'm interested in. It's a little bit darker than the ones below or on top. So if we measure that, then we can see that I'm somewhere in the 20 to 30 nanometer range. Here it says 26. So I can be more confident with that when I know that my image is free of artifacts. So with that, that ends how to get a high resolution image of your cross-section surface.